When it comes to food safety, temperature control of perishable food is a very important control mechanism. When it comes to temperature control, we normally use different kinds of thermometers to check the food temperature accurately. So you've got two choices of food thermometers. You've got what's called a probe and you've got what's called a gun. A gun is used only for cold food. So for example, you might take a delivery at the back door or you might check the refrigerator, for example, for the temperature. So only for cold food. And the reason for that is you can't go inside the food to get the core food temperature. When it comes to probes, they can be used for both hot and cold food. So if you've got a minimal budget, we recommend that you at least get a probe. So this can be able to check both hot food and cold food. When it comes to temperature control, we need to make sure that these are working accurately. How do we do that? We do that by doing what's called an ice and boiling water check. So you're gonna take a glass, fill it up with some ice, about 90% ice, a little bit of water, and you're gonna drop this in, and you're gonna wait for the numbers to stabilize, and you wanna get zero degrees. Yeah, you also do this in boiling water. So we put this into boiling water, and we should get 100 degrees. If, for example, you're getting more than plus or minus one, either side of 100 or zero, then you'll need to replace your thermometer and get a more accurate thermometer. When it comes to a gun, obviously we can't drop the gun into the water. So you're gonna tear off a tissue paper, drop it into the water, and that's how you're gonna shine the gun either in the ice or boiling water when you're checking for these are working. When you're checking in an ideal environment, you wanna check this on a regular basis to make sure your probes and your guns are working accurately. In New Zealand for a cafe and restaurant, that's a minimum of every 12 weeks. Obviously, if you can do it more often, in a hospital, in a supermarket, we are checking these much more often, every week, for example. So in an ideal environment, depending on the risk, we would check the accuracy of our guns and probes a lot more often. Really important when you're taking temperatures that you are not relying on the gauge on your refrigerator. Most times, gauges are not necessarily accurate. So it's important that you verify using a probe, making sure that you're using a sanitizer on the probe before putting it into the refrigerator and verify that you're finding the same temperature on the probe as on the gauge. If you're finding a similar temperature, then by all means, you can trust the gauge. So these are some few examples of things that you need to consider when it comes to a probe and gun type thermometer. We are securing and writing down all our records. You're checking the refrigerator. Some regulatory health inspectors and verifiers like us to keep a cup of water in the refrigerator and to check this in the morning, minimizing the risk of you putting this contaminated probe into potentially food. By using a separate cup, a separate glass in your refrigerator, you can more accurately check the temperature of your refrigerator in the morning as the temperatures are more stable in the morning. People have not been opening and closing the fridges all night. So those are some examples of temperatures. When it comes to some key temperatures, your refrigerator needs to be at four degrees centigrade or less. Your freezers need to be at minus 18 degrees centigrade or more. So for example, minus 19, minus 20, that's fine, but no less than minus 18. The danger zone where bacteria grow is from five degrees to 60 degrees, hence why we encourage you to have your chillers set to four degrees. In an ideal world, you want to crank down the thermostat to go slightly lower than four degrees. This is going to minimize the risk um, from bacteria such as listeria that love to grow in the refrigerator. So you wanna go as close to one degree as possible. Obviously at zero degrees, the the refrigerator is going to frost and that's going to spoil the quality of your food. So uh, as low as possible without compromising on the quality.
When it comes to cooking, in a hospital environment, for example, we cook food to 80 degrees centigrade. Some regulatory health inspectors might accept 75 degrees, for example. At our training, we go to 80 degrees centigrade. If you're reheating food in the microwave, for example, or in an oven, for example, on the stove, for example, you want to go to 85 degrees centigrade or more. If you're keeping food hot in the oven, in your Ben Marie, um, during transportation of food, it's really important that you're considering keeping it hot. Um, 70 degrees or more is our recommendation when it comes to hot food. Some council and regulatory health uh, verifiers might accept 60 degrees. So those are some examples of key temperatures. Record keeping, really important that you're writing down records every day. If your food is stored in a refrigerator or a freezer, we have records for the freezer. We have records for the refrigerators so that we uh, can show the regulatory health inspectors or the council inspectors or your verifiers that you're complying with the law and you're keeping the food that you're making for commercial purpose safe. So those are some simple things that you need to consider when it comes to temperature control.